Hello everyone and welcome, and today we're going to look at another Rashid Nesmetinov game. This time he was playing a player called Alexei Sutin, played in the year 1947 in a RS FSR Championship. And during this tournament, this game actually received the Brilliancy Prize. So we get into a very fascinating game. So in this game, Nesmetinov is playing white, so we're going to look at it from the white perspective, and Sutin plays black. The opening began with e4, black played the, the Sicilian, knight to f3, knight to c6, and Nesmetinov played the main line with d4, black took on d4 and white's recaptured, black now played knight to f6, attacking the e4 pawn, and Nesmetinov defended with knight to c3, black played d6, unleashing the bishop on c8, and Nesmetinov played bishop to g5, attacking the knight on f6, and threatening to take it, maybe doubling black's pawns. Black played e6, opening the queen and bishop out, prepared to play bishop to e7, and Nesmetinov played bishop to c4. Now usually black plays bishop to e7 here, both sides castle, and we get into quite an even game, and black's got a very solid structure. In the game, however, black decided with a6 instead, so maybe preparing to play b5 and hit this bishop on c4. However, to avoid this, Nesmetinov just simply captured on c6. So he played knight takes c6. Black, of course, recaptured. And now Nesmetinov played a very strong move indeed. Um, I wonder if you'd play this in your games. He played the move e5. So what this does is attacks the knight on f6 with the pawn. And now also attacks this d6 pawn. And the tactics are in white's favour. Let's say black played d5 to avoid the exchange of pawns. White can just take on f6 with the pawn, and if uh, g takes f6, play bishop h4, and if black takes this bishop on c4 to regain material, white can recapture with queen takes queen, king takes queen, and follow in with bishop takes f6, forking the king and rook. And white's going to win a lot of material. Also here, if d takes e5, then white can potentially actually trade queens, that's why I put the arrow there. But uh, queen f3 is actually much more deadly, attacking the c6 pawn. If bishop d7 to defend, then actually white gets an incredible game. You can castle queenside, pinning the bishop on d7 with the rook. If bishop e7 to get uh, the queen off the bishop g5 diagonal here, then bishop takes f6, should be played by white. If bishop takes f6, white can play rook to d3. Preparing to double rooks. So if queen c7 to avoid um, the pin, rook hd1, rook to d8 to defend the bishop, white should now play knight to e4, attacking the bishop on f6. If it drops backwards, you can play knight to d6, check. Taking the knight is now mandatory because then queen takes f7 we played with checkmate, so bishop takes d6, and white can play rook takes d6. And here white's got an excellent position. For instance, let's say um, king to e7, then white should just play queen to g3, attacking two pawns, and will win their pawn back with excellent compensation. If uh, not king e7, then castles. Again, white can just play queen d3, though, and pick up more material. Three pieces now, attacking this bishop on d7, and if it moves, the rook will just capture the rook on d8, with a great game for white. So, after this e5 move, we've just realised we can't take it, and we can't play d5. So black plays the best move that they can, queen a5, attacking e5, and also inadvertently attacking this bishop on g5. For instance, let's say white takes on f6 with the pawn, then black can just recapture, queen takes g5. If f takes g7, queen takes g7, and all of a sudden black's actually doing fairly well in this game. So after this move was played in the actual game, there's Metnov captured on f6 with the bishop, bishop takes f6, black recaptured, um, and white took on d6. So black has two double death pawns, and now they've got to deal with this pawn on d6. So white is actually a pawn up in this position. But black wins it back fairly quickly with queen e5 check, attacking the king and this pawn at the same time. Nesmetinov just plays king to f1, and castling isn't really important in this game at the moment because both kings will probably settle in the centre. Just because there's two open files on the B and G file, um, it's not safe to castle either side for white, to be quite honest. And in this position, black now played queen takes d6 in the game. Nesmetov noted actually thought bishop takes d6 was a much better move. 
If white continued with queen to f3 to attack the c6 pawn, then queen c5 attacking the bishop and protecting the pawn. White can play b3. If bishop e5, there's knight to e4 attacking the queen. And if the queen drops back, white can play rook to d1. Again, black's doing okay. White still have got the better position in the game just due to the mobility of their pieces. White's got two nice pieces in the centre, this bishop and this knight, and this rook now is opened on this d file. Black's got some work to do to develop this bishop on c8, um, and potentially these, this rook on a8 and h8 as well. So like I say in the game, instead black took the pawn with d6, so at least they've gained the material back. But Nesmetnov now plays queen to f3, attacking f6, and Sutin played f5 to protect their pawn. But uh, this is just a demonstration of how great of attacker Nesmetnov is. He's just unrelenting. So he's just attacked this f6 pawn to develop his queen, and now he develops his rook with rook to d1, attacking the queen on d6, just forcing black to keep on making defensive moves. And black's always under pressure. For instance, if queen c5, then again, white can just continue development with b3, securing all these white squared pawns, and potentially play knight to a4 next move. But in the game, Sutin played queen c7 to hide the queen behind this pawn. And I wonder if you can find Nesmetnov's next move. This is actually given as the best move as well by the computer, which I was surprised about. It's fairly aggressive, and like I say, Nesmetnov just continues their attack. They've pretty much developed all their pieces, except for this rook on h1. So what do you think white should play next? Well, in the game, Nesmetnov played the incredible move g4 doesn't care about his king protection because it's pretty much safe on this f1 square and for the time being anyway. And it basically keeps on forcing black to make decisions. If black ignores this threat of g4 with bishop to e7, white will just take. And if takes again, just queen h5. And the bishop and the queen are attacking this f7 pawn. Forcing black to make concessions with rook f8. And white will just play rook g1. All the pieces are developed and the friends play moves like rook to g8 because this bishop and this queen are still converging on this f7 square and of course white's still got this open d file rook here to stop the king from escaping. So in this position black is pretty much forced to capture so f takes g4 was played, Nesmetnov recaptured with queen takes g4. And I've just put a little arrow here because the next move I think is a bit suicidal by black. Basically this bishop on c8 is protecting this e6 pawn. This e6 pawn protects the king for black and holds their position together. In the game, bishop to b7 was played. And you'll see why this is a, such a bad move in a second. But uh, let's make enough actually thought bishop d7 was better. It's not much better, but uh, still it holds on. Queen to d4 would have probably been played by Nesmetlinov. Rook g8, and he said he would have played knight to e4. So I think this is still crushing for white. If bishop g7, knight d6, check, king f8, and white can play queen c5, with discovered attack ideas against the black king. So I think this is why in this position black didn't go in for bishop d7. But after bishop b7 in the game you'll see why this is an unfavorable move because Nesmetnov just crashes in with bishop takes e6, sacks the piece. After f takes uh, he plays queen takes e6 check. Uh, just, just an incredible sacrifice. Again this is vintage Nesmetnov. And why is this so good? Well basically checkmate so they've got to either block with the queen or the bishop if they block with the queen with queen e7 i think this is actually technically better because after queen f5 um of course white's friends play rook e1 but black could find a draw here black should play bishop to c8 attacking the queen and there's a few unfavorable moves of white here for instance if queen h5 by white then black can play queen f7 if queen e5, then just queen e7. It's probably a draw. If white tries to get further material with queen takes h8, black can play bishop h3 with check. King g1 is the only move, and queen g5 will be checkmate against the white king because it's check and he can't escape with his bishop. So in this variation, white has to be very careful. They should play queen f3, attacking the pawn on c6, and black now has to be a bit, bit careful. If rook b8 by black, now white can actually play queen h5 check. The point is, if uh, queen f7, queen e5, queen e7, white can pick up the rook on b8, and there's no bishop h3 ideas because the bishop on c8 is pinned. 
So going back to this variation with Queen F3, Rook A7 should be played by Black, and this leads to a drawn game. I've gone through this with the computer and it's a very complicated position. I don't really understand it fully myself still after analysing it for quite some time. But the point is even after rook e1, bishop e6, black's material up but we get a lot of positions where let's say queen takes c6, king f7, rook g1, bishop h3 check, rook g2. So we get a lot of positions now where black wins more material. But it ends up where usually white has an exchange down but has multiple pawns in lots of situations. For instance here, queen b5, rook e2, bishop e7. But in this particular game it's perpetual with queen f3, king g6, queen g3. Um, and yeah, that's a drawn game in this uh, variation. And I just for demonstration purposes I'll just show you that if the king comes this way to like e8, there's moves like knight to d6 check because this rook is ever so powerful pinning this bishop on this e-file. So there's a multitude of reasons why queen e7 is good and also bad. It's a, a long variation that you should look through. In the game however, bishop e7 was played to block this queen move. And there's Metnoff fold in with knight to e4. Black played bishop to c8 to attack the queen and white is just in time to play knight to f6 check. So the bishop on e7 is pinned by the queen so the king has to move here. King f8 is forced and again we get into some very interesting variations. White can absolutely win this position here by just playing knight to d7 check. And this is something that's meant to have missed. The point is, let's say king to g7 here. White can just play rook g1. And that's going to lead to checkmates. There's nowhere for the king to go. The only move is queen g3 to block the check or bishop to g5 to block the check. And they'll just get taken and move later. So after knight to d7... If bishop takes d7, then white just plays rook takes d7, and we'll pick up the bishop on e7 and move later, and win back the material with some excellent attacking mating ideas. So after knight to d7 in this variation, king e8 is the best move, but even so, rook g1 is an absolute monster of a move, preparing rook g8. If bishop takes d7 now, white can play rook check, rook takes is forced, queen takes check, the bishop is forced to block the check and white can play rook e1 with check and the only move to save black is bishop to e6 but then just queen takes e6 with check if bishop e7 then queen g8 check king to d7 is the only move and white just plays queen takes a8 and has an excellent position so there are a multitude of pawns up and they've got the exchange up as well in this variation. So going back to the actual game, knight d7 was an absolute killer here for black. And probably should have been played. In the game, Nesmetnov actually played the second best move, rook to d7. But this technically doesn't win. Um, in his book, Nesmetnov actually suggests it does win. But he missed the move here, queen to d6. A very hard move to find, to be fair. And why is this move so good? Well, this move basically allows black to swap off material. If queen takes d6, then just comes bishop takes d6. And if rook takes d6, this actually is a bad move because then king e7 can be played. And if rook takes c6, there's bishop h3. If king to g1, this leads to mate with rook hg8, takes, takes, rook g6 and checkmate for black. And after bishop h3, if king e2, then just bishop g2 for black and black is going to win more material. So after queen d6, queen takes d6 and then bishop takes d6. The best move for white is actually knight takes h7 with check. And if rook takes h7, white can play rook takes and black should play bishop e5. Again, this is quite an actually drawn position. Black's got two bishops for the rook, but uh, again, he's a lot of pawns down. So it could be salvageable for white in this endgame. But after queen d6, an alternative for white is rook takes d6. But this is actually terrible as well because then bishop takes e6. And once rook takes e6, black has a nifty king f7, attacking the knight and the rook. Uh, and if rook takes c6, then bishop takes f6 is just winning the whole piece up. So in this variation, the computer actually gives rook takes e7 as the best move. Black can take on e7 and white should just play knight to e4. And this is another example of a game where it's probably a draw. White's actually a couple of pawns up, but the exchange down. So white's two pawns up with a knight for the rook. 
So it would be a very interesting endgame to see who would win this. So after rook d7, queen d6 was the last chance saloon for black to draw the game. Instead though, Sutin played bishop takes d7, attacking the queen and taking the rook off. But white can just take back, knight takes d7 check, king g8 was played and Nezmetnov played knight to f6. Again the bishop on e7 is pinned by the queen and there's two options for black here. King f8 just loses though because white will just play rook g1, threatening to play rook to g8. So even after bishop takes f6, there's queen takes f6. If queen f7, just queen takes the rook. The king moves and then white will just hoover up another rook. So in this variation in the game, king d8 was played. And Nesmetnov now finally gets the last piece into the attack. Here actually the, the whole rook down, but it doesn't really matter because the whole of white's pieces are converging in the centre to attack the king. King e2 was played by white. Threatening to play rook d1 check. Black played queen to d6. And white continued with rook d1. So now they're going to win the queen. This uh, rook pins the queen against the king. If black tries to sidestep this with king c7, white can play rook takes. And if bishop takes, just play queen d7. After the king moves, they'll pick up the bishop and has a queen and knight against two rooks with more pawns as well. An easy win for white in this endgame. So in the actual game, black took the rook, queen takes d1, king takes d1, and Sutin took on f6. The queen recaptured with check. The king went to c7. Nesmetnov checked on e7. The king went to b6, and white played c4. And actually here, black resigned the game. I'm not sure if this was time trouble or any more moves were played, but this seems to be the last move in the game and it says 1-0 to Nesmetinov. I think this is a bit premature. The computer actually gives White as an overwhelming favourite in this game. I think it's just due to the fact that um, White is two pawns up and still has the Queen. And I think White's plan is just to launch this F pawn all the way up the board and hoover up any uh, leftover pawns. These pawns are rather weak for Black uh, and should be easily be taken later in the end game. So I did a sample variation anyway, so if play continued with check, king c2, attack the queen, white can just go to b4, king a7 and play a4. After a few more moves, white just simply pushes the pawns up, so pushes this f pawn up. Even though the rook's attacking uh, b2, there's queen d4 and just f5. So white just holds on to these pawns quite simply. And there's no way for black to stop this queen and pawn promoting. b4, a nice move. So black can't take this because then queen e8. h5, queen e8 anyway, king a7. Queen e5 and rook to c7. Again, white just pushes the pawn up. Black has nothing to do but push their pawns. King c3, rook f7. And eventually... Black has to uh, block this F pawn, and this allows White just to pick up three pawns. And here I've stopped it because it's uh, an easy win for White now, because they're still protecting their pawn on F6. I'm going to take this A6 pawn with ease and start launching all these other pawns up. A very easy victory for White in this endgame now. So this game won the brilliancy prize. I think that was due to the fact that um, it's just ins an inspirational game. If we just go back to this bishop B7, how many of us would take on e6 here? I think in a blitz game we probably would, but in a long play game it's very risky. Bishop takes e6, takes, takes. A very nice sacrifice. And this is why I like Nesmetnov's game, because they're not concrete variations. Um, often the analysis shifts from one side to the other. It's never just a one-sided affair, and there's a lot of tactics and variations to deal with. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed my analysis of the game. If you saw anything that I missed, please do comment below. It's also good to get your feedback on what works and what you don't think works in these videos. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.